So good morning, everyone. Again, my name is Tyson Choptain. I'm Executive Vice President of Broadview Networks. I'm joined by Jordan Bissonnet, our Solutions Analyst. And today we're going to talk about uh, business process automation and really where we're going to start the focus of this conversation is around the Microsoft stack of uh, business process and business automation technologies. Jordan, do you want to start up the PowerPoint presentation there? Thank you. Uh, so once again, I'm Tyson Choptain and uh, Jordan's joining us as well. And really Jordan's going to be delivering the majority of the content throughout this um, presentation because it's really focused on showing you what we can do more than it's focused on listening to me talk. Uh, I will provide a, a bit of a brief introduction to what we are discussing here. And uh, as I mentioned uh, a moment ago, we're focusing here on the business process automation tool set from Microsoft, which is uh, really an extension of the uh, Office 365 environment. So we'll talk about uh, reports and dashboards. We'll talk about uh, data capture. Sorry, Jordan, I'm going out of order. Uh, we'll talk about workflow automation and uh, we'll talk about some task creation. So really, we're going to show the, the products that are coming up on the next slide and what they can do. Uh, Power BI is the uh, reporting tool for Microsoft. It is the data visualization engine that Microsoft uses that really takes, you know, whether it's data coming out of an Excel spreadsheet, uh, data that you pulled out or connected to a database, and it really brings that data to life. Um, often the reports that, whether it be a line of business application or as I mentioned again, a spreadsheet that's being utilized are, are pretty limited and don't give a lot of uh, visual capability to the users that are trying to use the data. Uh, Power BI really changes that. Uh, Power Apps is an extension of that uh, Power BI philosophy, and it's really about delivering very easy to build, uh, simplified applications that can be deployed out to users via web browser or via mobile devices, um, leveraging data stored in the Microsoft Cloud, whether it be in SharePoint lists, whether it be in SQL databases, whatever's the right fit, uh, and taking that data and giving users a very easy way to interface and interact with the data from a form perspective or an application perspective, which again can then be visualized via Power BI. Power Automate, uh, what we've generally known as Flow, is the the workflow tool and that's where we can say when data comes in or when something changes in one field or someone submits a form or someone updates a field on a form or someone else approves something it can kick off another workflow to provide or pass information to another user or to another process and when you use these technologies together um, you're able to uh, build, uh, or we're able to help you build some very simple applications that have what seems like uh, a large amount of capability in a very simplified manner and easy to distribute and use for your users. All of this is leveraging OneDrive and SharePoint uh, technologies. SharePoint really be the key underpin of a lot of these technologies because SharePoint's often where your data is going to sit. Again, whether that be a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, uh, a SharePoint list, or if you're going into a more advanced uh, configuration, uh, potentially a, a SQL database. And then forms can be another tool that we'll utilize for data input uh, into a list or a database that we can then utilize with Power Apps, Power Automate and Flow, and then visualize via Power BI. So reporting and dashboarding. So for a lot of us, we're probably used to Excel charts and graphs. Excel charts and graphs are really helpful if you're going to take a uh, set of data sitting in Excel, or you're gonna take some data out of another application that you exported, put it into an Excel spreadsheet. You're gonna create a chart, you're gonna create a graph, you're gonna copy that chart or graph or take a screenshot of that chart or graph. You're gonna drop it into a PowerPoint presentation, or you're gonna throw it up on a screen potentially to, to show to other people, but it's not really well designed to be shared. 
and it's not easy to build Excel charts and graphs and give them to a large number of people to view and interact with the data in the way that you want them to interact with the data without them either having Excel or having a decent amount of Excel experience and knowledge. And there's not a lot of customization. As I mentioned, people have to know Excel to be able to work with the pivot tables or work with the charts and graphs that go with it. And that's where Power BI really comes to the, the table with an incredible set of features and functions. It's not very difficult to use. It's very easy to manipulate your data set, not change, changing the data, but redesigning the way the data is structured so that it reports well. One of the fundamental problems with Excel is it's designed to store data for usability of data review. It's not well designed to store data for usability of report generation. And you, if you ever go through the process of taking an Excel spreadsheet and putting it into a tool like Power BI to visualize the data, you'll find that you're doing quite a bit of modifications to that Excel spreadsheet based on how most people usually build Excel spreadsheets. And you'll deal with that even more if the Excel data that you're using is an export from some other application or data source. So Jordan, why don't you why don't we go ahead and talk about and show some of the different things that we've done for customers with Power BI? Sure. Yeah. Let me just uh, bring that up here. So what I'll do is give a quick demo on uh, for people who haven't ever really seen um, seen the tool yet. I'll, I'll kind of just quickly show what some of the differences are between a tool like this versus using um, using Excel spreadsheets. So one of the first um, first things you'll see is uh, these reports are um, can be accessed via the browser, via your phone, um, either going through the browser or you can also download the, uh, the uh, Power BI app onto your phone. So just uh, you will then access it here and then I'm just going to bring up uh, an example of a of a report here. So kind of right away, you'll see one of the main differences here is it's just uh, visually even just a lot more um, kind of clear and appealing versus uh, some Excel reports. And then the uh, the main, I guess, feature that I think makes this no, uh, makes this a lot more uh, powerful, no, uh, no pun intended, but is that these, um, uh, these graphs are completely uh, can be um, interactive. So let's say here we want to click on a specific country. So here by uh, clicking on United States, it's now automatically changed and filtered the rest of the graphs to um, and, and now it's only showing uh, data related to the US and this could be done with anything. So here, for example, here we have a um, a graph showing the top 10 uh, sales by um, city. So if I unclick this, this is overall. And now let's say someone is saying, oh, I wonder, you know, for trumpet sales, what's our top top city? So here you'll see these are our top 10 cities. These are how many we sell per month. This is how, how much money we made. So the nice thing with this is um, generally you would make one one report in Excel and someone would be like, this is great. But now I'd like to see this for you know the Canada sales. So can 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 you make me a graph for that? Well, now you just literally have to click on this, and then here's your here's your report. So it 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 really lets you drill down and 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 dive down, and you can do some other neat things like this. So here, um, I don't know if other people have, might have noticed June seems higher than the rest of the months, right? So you can actually right click on this and say analyze and say explain explain the increase. Now uh, Power BI will kind of in plain um, English try to explain to you why this month is higher than the other. So here it's saying um, guitar, banjo and trumpet sales were um, higher than average and there was more sales in Canada than average. So it's it's trying to just explain to you why why a month is higher than 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 the other. So, and then a few other um, 
neat things you can do is now once you see your graph here, this can actually be exported to a, um, you can do uh, different types of things. So you can just export this to a PowerPoint presentation, a PDF. So if, if you have a monthly report that you need to send uh, once a month, let's say, instead of spending hours and hours generating this, it's it can literally be as simple as going here, clicking export to PDF and sending it to whoever or or depending on how they're set up, these reports could just be shared live um, to them. And then one last thing, you, you can also set up alerts and notifications for things. And I have an example here on, and I'll show you that other report in a bit, but I have a report for safety. And then you can set up alerts that if you're, so here there's an alert for days lost. So I, I've set the threshold to be 20 and if, days lost is higher than that it'll it'll send you an email automatically so you can also have these reports uh, start start notifying you of when certain thresholds are are hit so let's say once your you know total revenue is over a certain amount you can have it send someone an email you can also set up uh, weekly or daily um, kind of subscription emails that can give someone like an end of a day recap here's a screenshot of the end of the week or end of the day. So uh, few, a uh, few differences between this and Excel. And the biggest thing as well is you're just directly connecting live to an Excel spreadsheet or to SQL databases, SharePoint lists, uh, and then a ton of other third party programs uh, as well. So and your users that you want to share this data with, they don't have to have extensive Power BI knowledge and experience. They don't even have to understand how this data got into Power BI. You can just share this visualization with them and they can interact with it. Jordan, if you can go back down to the month of June there and bring up those insights again. Um, these insights didn't have to be programmed. They didn't have to be created. Power BI does this using the AI that's built into the Power BI tools in Microsoft's cloud, and it actually built these insights automatically uh, based on the data that's there. There's no additional um, programming required to make that happen. So lots of functionality built in and very easy for the average end user to use. So that's a, an example, an overview of Power BI and you know dashboards, sales performance, finance, whatever department might want to use that type of data. Now, Power BI is great and it's very nice to have it, but now we got to talk about getting data into it and data capture. And that's a really important part of how you're going to do any business process automation, leveraging any of these tools. You're going to have application data and or you're going to have usually spreadsheets. And you may be getting that application data out via spreadsheets, um, or you may have the ability to tap directly into the database of the application data. The struggle that we have when we have multiple spreadsheets uh, especially if we have multiple spreadsheets, is uh, Excel doesn't do, doesn't make it easy for someone to take data from multiple spreadsheets and bring it together. And as you start linking multiple spreadsheets to data, those spreadsheets become more and more difficult to work with. Uh, using Power BI as that centralized location for bringing the data together and then using that data um, for those visualizations and those reports uh, makes it much easier than just trying to manage bringing multiple spreadsheets together in Excel. Uh, most application databases are, are too complex for most users to use, and your application doesn't necessarily generate reports or give you your data in the format you want it. So what we often end up helping customers do is take multiple data exports out of their application or access the database of the application and rebuild a data set that's better formatted for uh, Power BI and the visualization tools that Power BI provides. Also, that gives us the ability to start leveraging those data sets for Power Automate and or uh, forms to be able to start working with that data.
So we can combine data from multiple databases or data sets. We can gather data from electronic forms or applications via Power Apps. So lots of different ways we can bring data together, uh, whether it be from existing processes and just uh, mirroring those processes or leveraging those existing processes and bringing that raw data together or actually replacing that process with automated data input or um, aided data input, which can often reduce in the amount of data entry errors uh, that we see with data input in a lot of systems today. So yeah, Jordan, what are we going to demonstrate in this case? We got yeah, some survey collection, review yeah. and reporting. Yeah, I'll bring that up. So uh, in this demo as well, uh, I'll do a quick demo on, on uh, forms and how it can be used as a way to gather some um, information either um, internally or externally. Uh, the nice thing with uh, forms, forms is a great way to either just spin up uh, a quick a quick uh, online form survey, whatever for um, um, internal or external staff. And um, it, it, uh, it can be used for something as simple as like signing up for um, a company barbecue. Like you'd, you'd actually be um, shocked and how much time is wasted when uh, for those like internal things where someone has to then go chase a bunch of um, a bunch of staff hey have you have you have you signed up for this do you want a burger do you want fries all that stuff it just really wastes time so within five or ten minutes you can spin up a quick form and just send that out to your staff um, staff instead now forms can also be used to create uh, more kind of complex and in-depth um, uh, surveys for either if you want to get you know employee feedback or customer satisfaction um, stuff event registration so here's an example that we actually use it's um, our um, it, it, essentially it's a it's an assessment survey that we send out some of you may have have received this where we're kind of asking a bunch of different questions who you are where do you work and then some of the different tools you might be interested in. Um, so this form gets filled out and then once this form gets um, submitted, there is a there is a workflow using um, using um, Power Automate that is now going to um, grab all of that data and put that data into a a SharePoint list so that it could then be um, further kind of uh, manipulated if if need be and then we can also do some reporting on it and this is where as well so let's say this was a um a a customer satisfaction um survey this is where we can have some automation with some emails if let's say we've decided if you know uh if the survey results are less than five then send an email to the manager letting them know that a um you know negative review has has just been submitted so that someone can right away just go and you know follow up on that so you can start to add different kind of um, emails going to specific people when specific criteria are are met so here in this example we don't have any um, emails but it's basically taking the survey results and then putting it into a a sharepoint list here so now we just have a big database of all the results and then uh, in here, we can do things like just sorting or filtering by different things. So if we wanted to see everyone who said it was extremely important to them, email and Outlook. And so you, so you could start doing some data manipulation here inside of, inside of SharePoint. And then at the end, uh, you can then create Power BI reports that are directly connected to that um, to that SharePoint information. So we've essentially started with this and then it's gone through the different tools of using Flow and, 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 and SharePoint. And then the end result here is we have live, live, live dashboards that can just be exported to whatever a PDF and then sent to a specific um, customer saying here, here's the training that your um, company needs based on all the forms that were filled out. Now forms does have some basic um, basic out of the box reporting that that 
that you can access, but it is it is fairly kind of um, fairly limited. It does give you the option to export those results to an Excel spreadsheet, but then once again, someone is spending um, a lot of time creating these charts manually. I'll go back to the presentation here and then So when we want to get into workflow and task, we can talk about utilizing data from multiple apps to provide information for users. As I mentioned earlier with Power BI, we can bring together data. But as Jordan just demonstrated, as we're bringing that data together, we can also trigger workflows. We can trigger tasks for other users. So he gave an example where an email can be sent to someone um, based on information that's coming in, whether it's coming in from direct entry, whether it's coming in from an Excel spreadsheet that's uh, uh, imported into a SharePoint list or database, whether it's coming in from that Microsoft form, or whether it's coming in from a Power Apps application. All of those data sources, when that data is brought together, we can then build workflows and tasks off of that data. Uh, it can be as simple as a new document being placed into a SharePoint document library, notifying someone that this, the document's there. Or we can create with a document workflow so that as a document or a SharePoint app gets filled out, uh, not only do people get notified that the information's been filled out, but they also have the opportunity to approve or not approve information as it moves through um, the data set that it's a part of. So document and application usage processes can be changed based on where we can leverage technology to automate functions that were done manually before. So a really good example of this um, is Jordan will take us through how a safety form has been created to replace a paper form. And this one's really important because basically what was happening before is an individual, sorry, individuals or managers that had a safety incident would fill out a paper form. That paper form would be filled out usually by the employee. Then it would go to the manager. The manager would review it. Then they would send it to the safety person. The safety person would take that paper form. They'd enter that information into Microsoft Excel manually. Then they'd take that Microsoft Excel data and they would generate a static chart that they would then share to everyone in the management meetings on a weekly or a monthly basis. I don't remember specifically. Um, but in between those time frames, everyone else in the management team had no idea what other events had taken place. And you have the risk of data entry problems, both with um, dealing with whatever people choose to write down on the paper form and then the trans of the data on the data on the printed form to the Excel spreadsheet. So there's the opportunity for data errors, plus, you know, the form had just a lot of empty spaces. Uh, fill in what happened. Well, people could write a sentence or they could write a paragraph or they could write two words. So we've uh, provided both some uh, correlation of the data and some um, control of what data can be inputted as well as a reduction in data errors. And then by making it available in Power BI, it's now available to all the managers to see all the time. And I'll stop talking about it and let Jordan show it. No worries. So here is uh, an example of kind of a, 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 a dedicated SharePoint site or um, system, if you will, to, to track um, to track safety issues. Now, now this in uh, in uh, this example, we're doing <coughs> safety, but this is great for um, any other type of online forms, whether it's whether it's you know quality issues or customer trouble tickets or whatever it might be, right? So uh, it's it's great um, for replacing any kind of paper-based forms or specific emails that are being sent to people, whether it's vacation requests or anything like that. So in this in this example here, I've um, also made this a um, power app so that it can be filled out a little nicer on your mobile phone versus just the out of the box uh, SharePoint form. So I'll just show you uh, the process here of 
filling out a new um, safety incident. So we now have a just a very basic form here and I'll just say September 22nd and I'll just make a injured arm Jordan. I'll just give it a And then here's where um, the nice thing with the form versus just free free text is you can then now force um, people to choose from a specific type of of uh, you know drop down choices so that people can't just put random things in here that will really make reporting on it almost impossible. So uh, where I tripped. Okay, so I'll fill this one out, and then in a few seconds I should also um, receive an email which can then shows the example of now it it can it can send an email automatically to that to that person's manager um, just by ju just by looking at that person's active directory you can already tell who their manager is and then based on uh, the department you can have it send an email to the department manager depending on the you know severity you can have it go all the way up up to the president of the company if it's a really high um, severity injury things like that and now what we've seen is so now there's also a dashboard that just makes things a lot simpler to to view and to see versus having a pile of pile of sheets on your desk and trying to figure this out so like simple things if someone's like hey what are all the um, safety incidents we've had this month now here you'll see we can also visualize this data in a um, calendar view here so we can look at specific injuries on the calendar so if you have monthly safety meetings those those meetings become very simple you look at the september calendar and you click on and you click on the particular thing and here it is so it, it just makes it so much simpler versus someone spending a lot of time getting ready for these monthly meetings i'm just going to see if that and then i'm just going to bring up that email so this is just a very basic email but you'll see this email got sent out just saying a new safety incident moderate severity gives a bit of information on it and then click click here to view the incident right so in this scenario the manager would would get notified right away now the other things you can do is in in sharepoint there are these things called views where you can start leveraging that to to group and to view this stuff in different ways so here it's showing your recent incidents but let's say you want to see all the incidents by severity so you want to go look at all the high high versus low or you want to see the same information but by a uh, department so it, it it really without without even talking about the power bi reports um it's 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 already making it a lot simpler to just stay on top of all of these and you can have like the, for for instance, you can have a status open or close, and it can send you reminders. Hey, this this has been open for you know a couple of weeks now. Uh, please like follow up on it, and so it, it can also help to just keep those uh, tasks up to date. And then I'll just show you. Then at the end, you you can have these uh, reports here, and then where it's showing you real time data, same thing, and then you can easily go compare this year to last year. Last year we had seven incidents, this year we had 11. Uh, and then like I had showed in that other email, you can have uh, different um, notifications. If you if you uh, hit a certain threshold, it can send someone an email, things like that. So it just makes it so much, so much simpler to produce your monthly and yearly safety reports it's all just real time and you can kind of drill drill down into whatever section you want and like i mentioned this is this is for safety but there's a there's a million different uh scenarios where you can be using this whether it's safety or maintenance or uh, really it's uh, limitless so Excellent. 
Another example of a very simple um, workflow task is contract re and renewal management. So most organizations have contracts for service providers, um, for services they're, they're purchasing and using, and some of those contracts might have uh, auto renewals or may have stipulations about when those contracts uh, need to be managed or dealt with or updated. And so a contract and renewal management system gives both the ability to consolidate the storage of all your contracts into one location uh, with some reporting capabilities so that you can understand when a contract is you know, coming due and what needs to be done with it. So here you'll see this has uh, kind of the same, same look and feel. Um, essentially, this just becomes um, kind of a, it becomes a, um, you know, um, a repository of all these different uh, of all these different items, but the the biggest change versus this over a, a network drive is once these documents get added, you're you're being forced to fill out certain fields like when when does it expire, who's the owner, and different things like that, so that now we can stay on now just by being forced to fill out that um, those fields, we can now produce dashboards like this where, where it's showing here's here, here, here's everything that's you know upcoming, expiring. Here are all the recent ones. We can now group and view them in different ways, and we can create um, notifications like this that get s sent out once a week, once a month, whenever you want. Where it's uh, letting you know, you know, here are the things that are that that are going to be up for uh, renewal in the next 60 days. So stuff like this is great for people trying to stay on top of like warranties or um, insurance if you have to make sure you're you know properly insured for specific projects things like that and you uh, I've, I've seen people lose out on their uh, websites have domains have expired because they kind of forgot to renew things whereas having that put in here and having reminders letting you know uh, could have solved those um, those those issues. And I also just if I to um, hijack the uh, demo for one second, I wanted to show if we go back here. So for instance, on um, on this um, report here, what it's doing is it's pulling information from a bunch of different C CSV files. Now, with these reports, you can either directly um, connect to um, to um, different systems, but s some of them might be a little bit older or certain types of like line of business or sales, s sales systems or HR systems. Some of those don't have their own um, reporting or they can be um, really expensive modules that you would add on where um, a tool like Power BI can either directly connect to that or um, a lot of those systems can produce um, CSV or um, Excel exports of all that um, in all that information. Now we, we can set up a really simple monthly process for 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 instance. So here's an example of this is the folder here that is driving all of the data that is here. So let's say in this scenario, uh, let's I'm gonna grab the file here. So let's go uh, go ahead a month in time and let's say at the end of October, your sales system um, will produce the CSV export for the um, October sales. You would literally just have to drag and drop the October sales into this folder and then or and, and this in this uh, scenario it's on a SharePoint site this could be pointing to a specific network drive folder or there's a bunch of different ways and now if we go back to this report and just go refresh it now generally these would be set to auto uh, to uh, refresh automatically every hour or so, but I'll just force it to refresh now. 
And Jordan, in the case yeah. where you started with that Excel, those Excel spreadsheets as the data, we can set up an automated process for that as well. So if the application exports the data to a drive location on a PC or on a server, we can use OneDrive to sync that data up and get it into SharePoint automatically, right? Yes, yes, exactly. So now we'll so now you'll see now I have the October information here. So it's it's it 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 went from potentially someone spending hours uh, to literally it took me 10 uh, seconds to just drag and drop the the uh, the file or in certain scenarios that could just be automated where that file gets automatically exported into the right right folder and then your um, data is just always up to date and and I've 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 obviously got a biased opinion on this but it's I find it kind of amazing that you're kind of this is what it looks so you know this is what you start off with and then it just kind of magically just becomes this right so it's it's kind of uh it's it's just kind of amazing how you can take that um you know data and just produce some really nice graphs like this so in my in my unbiased opinion <laughs> So the majority of the work that uh, Jordan has shown you um, does not have to be a large, complex implementation. Um, most of these are probably two to three days of effort. They're easy to adopt. Um, you see an immediate return on investment. You know, the safety example is probably the, the simplest and easiest return on investment um, that we can talk about where, you know, they went from having paper documents and you know, manual reporting to automated or not automated, but digitized information gathering and automated reporting um, based on, on that information. Really important to understand the difference of configuration versus development. We're not writing code here. We're not creating an application. It doesn't have that level of complexity. And the benefit to you is it's not as long to get it up and running and it's not as difficult to maintain as a custom application. This is simply configuration of data and data sets uh, to either provide reporting or to bring information together. We're not having to real, do you know, full scale development of any kind. Um, it's easy to expand and build onto. So you can start with a very simple process, uh, even the safety form example. Originally, we just uh, set it up so that we took the Excel data in and generated the Power BI reports. Then we added on the um, Power Automate app, or sorry, the Power app to use for the data collection. So we removed the manual data collection with the Power app, and we removed the manual Excel reporting with the Power BI reporting. So, you know, to, to move forward with this, the, the easiest next steps that you can go through, um, you know, we can get you on a call with Jordan to discuss any of these items in more detail, whether it be uh, automating some existing manual workflows with documents or data, whether it be task creation, the data capture of bringing data from different systems together, whether it be reporting of, of existing data you have and or dashboarding. So, you know, the report that, uh, the, or the Power BI visualizations that Jordan showed, those can be used by individuals on their PCs or even on their mobile phones to view data wherever they are, whenever they're somewhere. But it can also be put onto kiosks that you might have throughout your space to have real time KPI reporting and dashboarding throughout your organization. So a lot of flexibility there. Jordan, did you want to talk any more about the, that recent project you've been working on where you've been billing, bringing the multiple Excel data sets together into a simplified set of data? Yeah, so there's and it's and it's kind of like the um, the demo that I showed here, but there's there's um, there's ways to and I'll, I'll kind of just show you a photo of of uh, resembles a, a data model I was working on where you're you um, in the background here of Power BI. So it can be as simple as 
and this is in the actual desktop tool. It can be as simple as just having one 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 data set, or you can be also um, connecting to a ton of different ones, and then there's a bunch of different things linked. So so this is where this tool can pull information from a bunch of different Excel spreadsheets, from a SharePoint list, from an external website, and then just bring it all um, together into one simple dashboard and then you can also take that one step further and um, and um, combine different dashboards into one main main dashboard so let's say you have a finance report and a sales report and then you wanted management to have a recap report pulling just bits and uh, bits and pieces from 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 each of those reports the 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 numbers they kind of um, want to see you could then have a summarized dashboard of all the other um, reports to really just kind of simplify. These are the things I want to see. And you, like you mentioned, you can just be looking at your phone and just get an overview. How's finance doing? How's sales doing? How's operations doing? Uh, and it can be. And, and and to I guess go back to your point about the Excel spreadsheets in this in this one example, um, there was there was a client going they 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 had a they had a 500 page um, process document that they had to go through to to generate um, customer customer reports that that has been now simplified to just dragging and dropping um, excel documents into a folder and then uh, power bi generating those 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 reports for them so it's um, save them tons of hours every every month generating reports. Yeah, so that was the example you showed there where there was a folder and you could just drop a Excel document in. As soon as you drop that Excel document, it now became part of the live Power BI reporting. And, and as you just mentioned, instead of someone manually pouring through Excel uh, spreadsheets and creating the charts and graphs, now they just take that Excel spreadsheet that's dumped automatically out of one of their systems and they um, upload it to SharePoint and now the Power BI data is updated. And then they've got pre-built dashboards or reports that they can then take snapshots of and put into uh, PowerPoint for a uh, report review with their customers. So the way we've set up this webinar, we wanted to make sure there was lots of time available for questions because often New ideas, new concepts that people haven't thought about before often breeds a lot of questions. So there's a couple of different ways you can ask questions. Um, if you want to just use the chat functionality and uh, Jordan, if you can just go up to the top there and show everyone where the chat option is in Teams, um, you can just, you know, type a yeah. comment and, and, and chat. Um, or you can, um, if you want to raise your hand, uh, we can turn your microphone on if you want to ask your question verbally, but please feel free to ask any questions or, you know, if you want any clarification or want to discuss any potential examples of what type of uh, data you might want to work with or, or, you know, what our constraints are on what kind of data sets we can work with. <clears throat> Uh, hi, gentlemen. Uh, this is Christina Redman from Cushman and Wakefield Stevenson. Um, just a little question about um, that. I understand that this would be a service offering that uh, Broadview would be um, giving, but is there any sort of training program that Broadview offers that could uh, that we could train somebody within an organization to do similar work? or even just queue them up to be prepared to do the work uh, with Jordan. Absolutely. So um, you're right. We we do a variety of, of, of solutions for helping customers leverage these tools. So certainly Jordan can be leveraged to just, you know, accomplish the task for you of taking your data and building reports. You know, those micro engagements we were talking about, he certainly can be used for consulting 
to look at helping someone in your organization, you know, use your specific data to build a specific report or a specific data set. And that can happen either before or after um, someone in your organization takes any of the necessary training. And that's our Broadview Academy uh, site, uh, which I'm actually located at today. And there we do Microsoft Excel training. We do Power BI training. Uh, we haven't been offering yet, but We'll be offering Power Apps training. We're just waiting for curriculum to be developed and uh, Power Automate training. So definitely they can provide the training to your users to be able to empower them to uh, utilize these tools to the fullest extent possible. Uh, once they take that formal classroom training and they, and they get that book knowledge, um, then they can either go ahead and, and gain their own experience doing it on their own, or of course they could leverage Jordan or other members of our team to help them um, utilize that knowledge and, and gain more experience and start building, um, a, whether it be very simple or very complicated um, and data sets, workflows and, and reports. So both, all options really exist between the, uh, the you know, service delivery side, Broadview Networks, or the training side, Broadview Academy. Thank you. Thanks for the clarification. No problem. Any other questions? Oh, it looks like Travis. Yeah, I'm just going to unmute you there. Go ahead, Travis, if you unmute. Yes. Am I, yeah. am I uh, on volume? Okay, thanks. Um, Travis Fulton from uh, CLPNM. Um, Jordan, I noticed uh, when you were showing off that uh, injury report thing with the form, that was really intriguing to me. Um, now that form was something that was produced instantly. Is that something that can be, you know, expanded and living for a length of time and and kind of shown shown within the uh, within the dashboard or within the within the list that it's going to be like continually being worked on and updated um, just because we have a where, where where I'm working a lot of forms a lot of assessments uh, take a very long period of time so they would be kind of active for a long period of time and and by that so like you mean like uh, the actual form would just stay open for for like a couple hours or as as people are slowly entering data yeah correct okay and yes yeah there's 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 different ways to create your forms that they're they can be kind of meant to stay open and just save um, save as you're going along. Uh, the, the 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 current form that we saw in this example, if if two people tried to open that particular one at the same time, it could it could could cause some issues. But there there are definitely ways to have those types of um, forms. It depends how you there's. There's a few different ways to create uh, Power App forms. One is from a SharePoint list, or one is just from from scratch, and then those give you a bit more of uh, flexibility to to do some of those things. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Or uh, let me just undisable your microphone. If you go ahead and unmute yourself there, Marinus, you can ask a question. There we go. Um, I'm curious on the job or on the safety program that you have out there. Can this be run mobile in which outside crews could, you know, what's required job hazard assessments have to be done daily on sites and maintained and logged. Uh, can this be set up from a mobile perspective as well? And, and to and I guess when you mentioned like from the outside, would that be like people that aren't part of your um, organization, like external external no, they, people? They would be part of the organization. OK, then 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 yes, uh, that could all be done so that these types of things can be just filled out on your phone on the job site. So uh, let's say there's an injury. And 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 the nice advantage actually with with your mobile phone is you can create an app that also allows you to take a photo. So so with your phone, if there's an injury, you you can literally take a picture of the um, of the injury, and then that could attach it to the to the form itself, or can you know put it in a in a in a 
in a, in a dedicated folder. Uh, so there's there's definitely a way to do that. And if and if things need to ever be filled out by someone externally, that's where you would use something like Microsoft Forms because those could be filled out anonymously and doesn't need um, to be part of your organization to fill fill that out. And, and if need be, we can even link the two together. So let's say not necessarily a safety incident, but let's say uh, a work order and you want to have uh, uh, an employee on site filling out a work order. Uh, the employee can fill out the work order. They can fill out what was done. They can take a picture that can immediately trigger a form that gets sent to the customer and the customer can then fill out the form approving what was done in the work order and the work order data can be provided in that form. So you could actually have a complete solution there where the person on site doing work fills out information. That information in real time updates a form. That form goes out to the customer and the customer can actually sign off and complete their portion if that's you know something that might be of benefit as well. OK, thanks. Problem. Thank you. Yeah, another great thing I've seen forms for actually is for getting people to um, once they get to your building or to a job site or whatever, if they have to, um, if they have to kind of say when it comes to like all the, um, you know, the COVID restrictions or have you been, you know, are you sick? Have you been traveling? All that stuff where people have to fill that out. Often that's being done either on um, paper. You can set up a form that someone scans a QR code, brings up a form and they just check check the box, yes, yes, I'm good. And then that could go to your kind of a database that keeps keeps uh, keeps all those records. Absolutely. There's really no limit as to what type of forms or database uh, input can be done within this system. Now, obviously, uh, you know, we're not getting into full scale application development here. We're really looking at, at replacing, you know, basic uh, business workflow and tasks that are taking place in the organization and automating that which is being done manually today. Any other questions? Okay, well, thanks everyone for attending. Really appreciate everyone taking the time. And uh, yeah, if you have any further questions about how any of this can work, how it can apply to your environment, how it works within the Office 365 stack of products, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to your account manager or anyone at Broadview. And uh, we can certainly follow up and have uh, uh, longer conversations or more in-depth conversations. So thanks very much for the time. Really appreciate it. Bye, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Bye.